Sitting here before me are two capsules. Each holds a spider. Now one of them is completely harmless, and the other hails as one of the most venomous spider species in the United States. What if I were to tell you that one of these is a recluse? Yes, a recluse. And I will be free handling this dangerous spider very soon. But first, you need to properly identify which is which. This one has long spindly legs, it's brown in coloration, and has a small abdomen. This one is slightly more robust, has a bulbous abdomen and stockier legs. Both spiders are creepy, both spiders are brown, and both of them suffer from a syndrome that I like to call BBS, basic brown spider. Now the recluse is one of the most misidentified spider species in all of the United States. And that's based on their range, their size, and their similar body structure to other basic brown spiders. Can you tell which is which? Now, if you picked this spider as the recluse, you are absolutely correct. Now, there are several recluse species that exist throughout the United States, the most famous being the brown recluse. This is its close southwestern cousin, the desert recluse. And for simplicity's sake, from here on forward, I'm just gonna refer to this arachnid as the recluse. And yes, like I said, I am going to freehandle it to see if it lives up to its villainous reputation. When it comes to properly identifying a recluse species, there are four helpful aspects to consider. And the first is location. The brown recluse is the most famous of these spiders and is only found in the South Central and Midwestern United States. Second is size. Recluse spiders are small. If your suspect is larger than a quarter, it's not a recluse. Bigger doesn't always mean more dangerous. Third is web structure. If your brown spider is dangling from a web, it's not a recluse. These spiders hide in cool, dark crevices. Fourth and finally, are the field marks. This can be tricky because you would have to be very close to the spider, but if you can spot a violin-shaped design on the cephalothorax, there's a good chance you are looking at a recluse. Hopefully that helps, but when in doubt, never interact with a spider and simply admire them from a safe distance. Okay, now that you guys have gotten a healthy dose of education, I think that you have earned your entertainment. So I'm going to place this little basic brown spider off to the side, and I think it's time. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to freehandle a recluse. Here we go. Now, it is fair to note that this spider has one of the most potent arachnid venoms in the United States. It has some necrotic components to it, and you've likely seen some pictures on the internet that are quite horrific looking. It's also fair to note that not all spider bites from recluse are equal. It all depends how your body reacts to the venom. Regardless, I do not want to receive a bite in this instance. So I'm going to try to be as absolutely calm as possible and just gently coax the spider out and onto my hand. Even though I am pretty sure that I'm not going to be bitten by this spider, it is still nerve wracking to have it walking across my hands. Now, when you look at the size of the spider, it's very small. And a small spider means small fangs. And in many instances, taking a bite from a spider like this is actually quite difficult. And the spider is not likely to inflict a bite unless, whoa, that was incredibly fast, unless it feels pressure on top of its body and it feels the need to defend itself. In almost all instances, spider bites happen as a defense bite. Obviously, spiders are not feasting upon humans, so the spider has no reason to bite me for any reason other than if it feels threatened. We've got it in a perfect position there, right on the edge of my thumb. They're incredibly fast, so it's better for me if the spider stays in one spot and stays completely still. I'm gonna just rest my hand down there like that. Now, the skin on the top of my thumb is rather soft. I would be more comfortable if the spider was on the underside of my fingers where they're a little bit more calloused, a little bit more worn in. And the softer parts to your skin are where you're more likely susceptible to be able to take a bite. Remember, the fangs of the spider are incredibly small, smaller in size than even something like a black widow. 
Now, when it comes to recluse bites in the United States, nearly 90% of the bites that happen heal on their own and do not result in large necrotic lesions. And it's all based on how your body reacts to the venom. If you get a spider bite and you're noticing that you're having some really negative effects, I strongly recommend that you seek medical attention. It's important to keep an eye on the bite site and determine what's happening. Is it becoming red? Is it becoming swollen? Is it starting to look pussy? Uh, one of the big fears with brown recluse bites specifically is that the necrotic components to the venom begin to break down red blood cells. If that does end up happening in the case of a bite, you definitely want to receive medical attention. However, there's no anti-venom for brown recluse or any recluse species venom. So while you can go through a potentially painful situation, it's very unlikely that you're ever going to be bitten by the species. Here's something else to consider. The name recluse basically means that these spiders are doing their best to stay out of the sight of humans. If you see one of these spiders, it's most likely going to be outdoors, usually in a dark, cool place. The desert recluse, which this species is specifically, almost is never found indoors. Brown recluse can be found indoors, but there's even been stories about people who have had brown recluse infestations in their houses and did not receive a single bite over the course of several months. Kind of goes to show you that they aren't necessarily aggressive toward humans. People across the United States have stories of seeing brown recluse. And it's not to say that you haven't seen a brown recluse, but this is one of the most commonly misidentified spider species in the United States. And so many brown spiders look similar. Now the way that most spider bites end up happening, just like with the Black Widow, is that the spider is accidentally pressed down upon and it feels as if it's going to be squished. If a spider is in a shoe or in a piece of clothing, you put it on, you feel something moving around, and then you swat at it, that's where the bite ends up happening. So if you see one of these spiders just crawling around and you ignore it or moving the other direction, your chances of having an interaction being bitten are slim to zero. So at this point I have to wonder, is the brown recluse really living up to its venomous and aggressive reputation? At this point, I would say not really. The spider's just freely crawling along on my hand and arm and at this point has not shown any form of aggression whatsoever. So what I want you guys to ultimately walk away from this episode with is the knowledge of how to properly identify one of these spiders if you come across it, but also to realize that spiders are not out to get you. It's also safe to say that you should never try to interact with a recluse or any spider species for that matter. Remember, I've got a lot of experience interacting with these arachnids. If you see a spider in the wild, simply admire from a safe distance and both you and the arachnid will go on to have a safe and happy encounter. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, let's get this little recluse back up into its container. And if you're a huge fan of Brave Wilderness, check out our merchandise at shopbravewilderness.com. You'll find everything from t-shirts, to hoodies, to backpacks, and even my authentic Coyote Peterson hat.